Hello, everyone. Welcome to our group seminar. In this group seminar, we are going to talk about something very interesting about the heuristic portfolio. I believe most of you are familiar with the theory-based portfolios. Usually, we need to solve an optimization problem to get an optimal solution, and then we use that optimal solution to deploy our optimal portfolio. Well, here we have four kinds of optimal portfolios that derived from solving a um, problem. But I don't know if you have heard about something like this. A theory is one knows everything, but nothing works. But practice is everything works, but nobody knows why. That seems to be true in the investment area. For example, here we plot the cumulative return of six portfolios. Four of the portfolios are theory-based portfolios and two of the po two portfolios are heuristic portfolios. So it's very interesting because these heuristic portfolios defeat the theory-based portfolios in the cumulative return. So what are these heuristic portfolios and why is that? Usually, these heuristic or practice-based portfolios are very simple. For example, the Wangarin portfolio is to do an equal allocation of all your money to all the assets. The quintile portfolio is a little bit heuristic that it first sort all the assets, like use the uh, estimated expected return, and then we can equally loan the top 20% or we loan the top 20% and the short the bottom 20% equally. So although these heuristic portfolios are very simple, but they have very good performance in finance. For example, by a survey in 2007, they find that of the 14 models they evaluate across seven empirical data sets, none is consistently better than the one over N portfolio. So why is that? How can the practice-based portfolios defeat the theory-based portfolios? Well, about the bad performance of the theory-based portfolios, the reason is already known. Because we have very poor knowledge of the true premise, like the mean and the current matrix, and a small perturbation on the premise might lead to a significantly different solution. And that's what people say a tiny mistake will result in a huge one. But why the practice-based portfolios perform so well? Well, it was a mystery until we find that we can reinterpret these heuristic portfolios as mathematically sound optimal portfolios. Now, let's see how to do that. The secret is the robust portfolio optimization. Denote by mu hat as the estimated return of n assets. And uh, we first sort all the assets, the, we first sort all the elements in mu hat in non increasing order. And we assume the true mean vector lies on an L1 known ball around the estimated return. And the space of this L1 known ball is measured by a parameter called epsilon. So technically, we can write down the robust maximum return portfolio with no shorting constraint like this. We want to maximize the worst case return of our portfolio subject to a non shorting constraint. And we also prove that the optimal solution to this problem is given like this. Its first M elements, its first M elements are equally weighty and the rest are zero. And here the M is decided by the uncertainty level, epsilon. The lemma tells us that the weight allocated to each active assets is exactly the same and the larger uncertainty level, the more active assets. So now we know that the one over M portfolio is only a special case of the optimal solution to this problem if the uncertainty level is sufficiently large. And the long only quintile portfolio is also a special case of its optimal solution when the uncertainty level is within this range. Well, so what about the long short quintile portfolio? 
It turns out that you just need to replace the non-shutting constraint by this dollar neutral constraint. Now the problem becomes non-convex, but still we can prove its optimal solution is given like this. So its top and bottom M elements are non-zero, and this M is also decided by the uncertainty label epsilon. This lemma tells us that in the dollar neutral case, the weight allocated to each active asset is still exactly the same. And the number of long assets is exactly the same as that of the short, shorted assets. And the larger uncertainty level, the more active assets. So now we know the long short quintile portfolio is still a special case or this optimal solution to this problem when the uncertainty level is within this range. Now let's look at another case. One might be not one might not uh, one might think that uh, our till now the uncertainty level uncertainty state might not be very convincing because it assumes the estimation error can equally affect all the elements in the mu in the mu hat. However, intuitively, we tend to believe that the mu with large variance is likely to suffer from larger estimation error. So it seems reasonable to include variance in the mean vector uncertainty set. Like here, we will replace the original uncertainty set by this one. And we use this new uncertainty set in the uh, robust maximal return portfolio. And then something magic happens the optimal solution becomes this. So still only M first M elements are non-zero and others are inverse proportion to the standard deviation. And this M is maximal K decided by the uncertainty level epsilon. So from this lemma, we get that the weight allocated to each active assays now becomes inverse proportion to their standard deviation and still the larger uncertainty level, the more active assets. So now we know that the, the long only quintile inverse volatility portfolio is a special case of the, its optimal solution when the uncertainty level is within this range. Now that's the end of this group seminar and thanks for your listening.